I was going to share just um, a couple of things very briefly. Um, I was going to show you how I do virtual student drop-in hours or virtual office hours. Um, I tried it a few different ways over the past um, few years, and I found that um, students, I think, often want to talk about assignments or grades, and so I found that um, I didn't have as many students showing up when it was just a, a kind of a free-for-all open office hour because they were kind of worried that someone else was going to come in. So I started doing um, like a Google Doc sign up. So they know that they can always get my Zoom office and the link on the home page, and they know that they can also sign up each week, and I have 15-minute slots. And that way, um, if students have questions or they want feedback on a specific assignment or, uh, you know, oftentimes they're wondering how they're doing in the class and they want to talk about grades, but it's more of, um, you know, a private one-on-one -on -one and they know that they can talk to you about whatever issues they're having. So it's something that I've done. I think it's worked out. It's worked out well. I do mix it up and sometimes I'll have just, um, you know, a random hour that's for anyone to pop in and I'll just message them and let them know anyone can come anytime. That way there can be a group discussion as well, as I think both are important. But this is more the consistent each week if students are going to, you know, come to my office hours. It's the same way that I would do it if I were actually on campus is one student at a time in my office. So um, that's something that I've done in the Google Doc works really well for that because they can just go in, sign up edit it and it works well. The other thing that I was going to share was um, we were talking about content. So I just wanted to show you one of the pages that I set up for my students. Nice. I'm going to watch a TED talk. And so, um, you know, after having gone to a, a few workshops and they talked about the importance of sort of explaining the assignment and, and building in an explanation of why they're going to watch a TED talk or read a certain article. Um, you know, I set up my page to kind of get, give a little background. I include the visual, but I also explain to my students, you know, what are you going to be doing with this TED talk? How does it build towards your first assignment? Um, what are the homework assignments that are connected to it? So that as they, as they're watching it, they're also keeping in mind, you know, what they're going to be doing with it. And they can already be thinking about that, taking notes and, and working towards that first essay that first assignment. Um, and at the OTC conference, I learned how to wrap my text around an image, which was really exciting. But it's HTML code, which is a pain in the ass. And I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to do it again, to be honest, but I did it once. So it was fun. Okay. And then the, the last thing I was going to share is my OER um, that I'm using for my English 211. So I've been working with Lisa on um, how to embed OER into my course. So I teach an American Lit Survey course, and there is this really great anthology, uh, but it's a little bit overwhelming as a PDF on its own for students to navigate through, and I don't use the entire anthology. So um, I started to just cut and paste from the PDF within, my, um, within the course. It, it takes a while, and I'm just sort of slowly building it in um, as I create the modules, but I thought I'd just show you uh, how I've done that. So, and this is a summer course, so they have a lot of reading <laughs> to do. So it's a little overwhelming, I realize that, but I don't usually overwhelm my, my 16 week course with this much reading the first week. Um, so they have, I, I let them know sort of what the text is and explain that it's free and how they can access it. Um, but I also let them know that I will be giving them the chunks throughout. So they, they can absolutely open up the PDF and go through it, but they, they don't have to. And so I took the introduction and I just embedded it within the page like this. And then I just cited at the bottom, you know, I worked with Lisa to figure out how to make sure that I give, you know, um, credit to the anthology. And voila, free text for students. Very exciting. And so, this is a good, this is so useful because a lot of people want to know what OER looks like inside a Canvas. And the, because you can copy and paste, essentially you're pasting it into the most accessible content in Canvas is a Canvas page. And so if you can put it into a Canvas page like this, this is the way to go. I love that. It's um, great too, because then I could just make sure here that Everything is accessible, easy to read. If students have a screen reader and they're using that to go through the textbook, it's all set. 
Yes.